we got our first of well, what could be two news videos today, as we got a little bit of news to get to, and it starts with Mercedes Monet teasing a match with Mickey James, as on multiple occasions, the current IWGP Women's Champion has said how much she would love to fight Mickey James before Mickey James retires. And head over to Impact and take to take advantage of the partnership that New Japan has with Impact Wrestling. I was trying to think I was trying to think does or has Sasha Banks and Mickey James fought each other before? And I think the legitimate answer is no. I could be wrong, but I think the answer is no. You know, and I'm surprised by that because both of them spent so much time in WWE that the idea that that they have never fought each other is a little crazy to me because of how long they were in WWE together. But with how WWE viewed Mickey James in her last run specifically, I'm also not surprised, but I'm like I'm surprised but not surprised because it's like it's not it doesn't happen often. It does happen, but it doesn't happen often where WWE clearly leaves money on the table. A lot of the time when they leave money on the table it's because of potential, not because of something that you know, not because of something that clearly should be a match that they that they look into. You know what I mean? But either way, Mercedes Monet has put the idea of fighting Mickey James near the top of the list of things that she would love to accomplish. And also, speaking of matches and before they retire, the man, the myth, the legend, Keiji Moto, had his final match. Today, as he came up short against Tetsuya Naito at a, no, at a Pro Wrestling Noah event, which also included Muda, I mean, uh, which also included Okada against Koji, Ki, Koji Kinamoto, but also Muda ended up having a I mean, I don't want to call it a match, but if I guess you could call it a match against his longtime friend Masahiro Chono. See, after his match with Naito, Muda cut a promo and basically challenged Masahiro Chono to an impromptu contest, and the two had one last fracas in the ring with Tiger Hattori being the makeshift referee. I wouldn't say that they fought, but I would say that it was... Nice to see one more time Tetsuya Naito against Masahiro Chono. As people were getting emotion, people got emotional during the match, that being the match between Naito and Mudo, because everybody knew it was Keiji Muto's last match. So you had Naito, uh, so you had Tanahashi and Chono getting emotional during the match knowing that this was the last time that they would see their friend, their mentor, Keiji Muto, in the ring. As Muto would go on to say, his nearly 40-year career is over, and he went out on his terms. Props to Keiji Muto for an incredible career. An incredible career. It is not often when somebody can sit there and say that they've been in wrestling for over f almost 40 years and props to him for being able to stick around and be as long standing and at the top of his game for as long as he had been. Props to you, Muto, on going out on your own and doing going out the way you would want to go out. And Godspeed for the rest of your career and, you know... Enjoy riding off into the sunset. Speaking of Mercedes Monet, though, 
Mercedes Monet has a new challenger, and it is Azumi from Stardom. Azumi challenged. Azumi is. Azumi is the high speed champion in Stardom, and it's the first, to my knowledge, to challenge Mercedes Monet from Stardom. And as Mr. Dave Meltzer, as Mr. Meltzer went on to say, it is very likely that this challenge from Azumi will come down as or on um, April 8th at the Sakura Genesis show. And it will be Mercedes Monet's debut in stardom and her first match in Japan. It was talked about that Kyrie would get a rematch for the IWGP Women's Championship, but it is very likely that Kyrie will get the rematch at a later date and not on April 8th, maybe at the next New Japan show, which I believe is usually Dontaku or I fr I think Don wrestling at Dontaku is the is the summer show for pro uh, at, for New Japan. I could be wrong, but I think that's where they go usually in in the summertime. Also, Raw had a lot of movement in the WrestleMania. A lot of movement in the WrestleMania uh, way of thinking. With Edge losing to Austin Theory in Theory's Open Challenge match. And Theory retains the United States Championship. But now Theory is officially talking about John Cena. And giving him a warm, warm welcome when he returns on March the 6th in Boston, Massachusetts. Theory is, it has been said for months, for at least a month at this point, that Theory would be challenging John Cena at the Showcase of the Immortals. Cena will be away filming Ricky Stanicki in Australia between now and over the course of February and March. So he will not be able to appear at that much in WWE, but he will be here on March the 6th. He will be here on March the 6th in West New in Boston, Massachusetts, and will likely set up the match with Theory, unless maybe WWE has something planned where Theory and Cena could do something in, you know, maybe at the movie set. I mean, it is WrestleMania go going Hollywood. So maybe Cena, uh, you know, maybe Cena, um, maybe Cena does something to piss off Theory on Raw, and then Theory so shows up at the show, or on the set on the movie set, and attacks John Cena, or something to that effect. You know, I could see any of that happening, but also, if Theory is going against Cena at WrestleMania. Does Theory win? Or does Cena win? I think that you have Cena win, and then you try and book Theory and Cena again, and the second time you have Theory win. Because right now, in this very moment, right now, in this very moment, Theory does not need a WrestleMania win over John Cena. They are booking him the right way, they are booking him in the proper in a proper direction. And by that I mean, you rushed him up the card last year. You rushed him up the card before, and it didn't work out. So why would you bother doing it again? Why would you bother doing it again? You know, why would you bother rushing him up the card again? Let him take his time and get up the card slowly but surely as opposed to trying to rush him up the card and get him there before he's ready. It is unquestionable that Austin Derry will 
is somebody that WWE has a lot of trust in and sees a lot of potential in. Theory does have a lot of potential. Theory does is somebody WWE should have a lot of trust in for the future. But the fact of the matter is, his future does not need to start at WrestleMania 39. It could start after the fact. And I'm not saying Cena should definitely win. I'm just saying that Theory does not need to win. And it may make sense to try and get multiple matches out of it rather than just one. And I think you get multiple matches out of it by having Theory lose. You don't have multiple matches. You don't get multiple matches out of it by having Cena lose. But again, that's just my opinion. You know, and I'm not... Uh, how do you put it? I'm not the one booking the show. Also on Raw... Also on Raw, you had Trish Stratus was supposed to make her return to WWE to help Becky Lynch and Lita... But Becky Lynch and Lita instead extended a challenge to damage control, specifically a Io Sky and Dakota Kai for a shot at the Raw at the WWE Tag Team Women's Tag Team Titles, which will take place next week. And very likely, Trish Stratus will be appearing next week on Raw to set up a six-person tag team match for WrestleMania, the match we were supposed to get at Elimination Chamber. But due to Dakota Kai's injury, we were not able to get it at, Wrestle at Elimination Chamber, but it is a bigger match, and it, in my opinion, fits better at the Showcase of the Immortals. With that being said, though, we do have more news to get to, and we will get to it in the next news video. So with that being said, I will see you then in the next video.